Hey everyone, this is Connor Reed with the Calculation Center with another video in our calculus series. Uh, continue on the topic of differentiation, we'll now be talking about one of the applications of differentiation, which is finding critical points. Now, a critical point of a function f is a point x such that f prime of x is equal to zero. Now, the reason we care about these is, geometrically speaking, they correspond to local minimums, maximums, or inflection points. So over here I've graphed uh, this blue curve is meant to represent the function f of x. And I've also marked uh, its critical points. So notice at all these points, I'll just zoom in a bit, I suppose. Um, at all these points, the derivative is zero. We can see that because when we draw on the tangent line, if we were to draw the tangent line accurately here, they'll all just glance off, in a st but the line itself won't have any slope. Even up here, well, that's a little, there we go. So roughly speaking, obviously I'm not perfect at drawing all this, but the point is that the tangent line to the graph at each of these points is flat. Now, so it's pretty obvious that this is a maximum, this is a minimum. This one over here is what we call a point of inflection. It's a point where you kind of go change the concavity of your curve. But it's, you can consider it as the kind of critical point that is neither a minima, uh, excuse me, minima or maxima. Okay? Um, so that's why we might be interested in finding critical points. If we want to find a local maximum of some process we're doing, we might need to do this. Now, so to solve them, we know that we're given that by the equation, the definition, that the way to solve them is to solve the equation f prime of x is equal to zero. But how do we classify them? If I figure out a bunch of points that are uh, critical points, how can I tell you if they're a minima, a maxima, or a point of inflection? Well, we've got this, what's called the second derivative test. So to find them, we solve f prime of x equals zero. To classify them, we check f double prime of x, the second derivative of f, which is just the derivative of the derivative. Um, we just check the double derivative and evaluate it at x naught. So x naught is a minima if f double prime of x naught is strictly greater than zero, not like greater than or equal to, always greater than. Um, it's a maxima if when we evaluate at the critical point, the second derivative is negative. And if it's equal to zero, we have to do some more work. So if f double prime of x naught is equal to zero, we really have to start looking at this graphically as the easiest way to do this. So we look at f prime of x graphically, not f double prime of x. We look at f prime of x and look at it around x naught. If the derivative, f prime of x, is going from negative to positive, that means we've actually got a uh, minima. The reason that is is because it means the slope is going from negative, the slope down here is negative because we're going down, um, to positive, so we're going up. Similarly, if we're going from negative to posi uh, sorry, positive to negative, that means we must have been once going up, but then at some point we end up going down, so that must be a local maxima. And lastly, if the second derivative, f prime of x, just glances off the axis like this, that means we're going from positive to zero to positive. So what that corresponds is, is to this inflection point we were talking about earlier, where we're going now, going up, and then we're slowing down, and we're coming in flat along this bit here. But that's only for an instant, and then we start going up again. Okay? So that's basically how we check. Generally speaking, you won't have to deal with this situation, because it can be a bit uh, messy to try and deal with it and argue it rigorously. But if you do, this is what you have to do. In general, you'll just have to use these tests most of the time. So I've got some examples down here. For example, we've got this cubic uh, function here. f of x is equal to x cubed plus 6x squared plus 9x minus 12. And we want to find all critical points and classify them. I should also point out um, this method over here technically works uh, even when the second derivative isn't zero. However, we generally stick to this because it's easier to make ra uh, sorry, uh, excuse me, rigorous arguments uh, for them. Okay? So even though we could draw these sketches each time, we're going to avoid doing that. So we want to find all critical points of this function, so we have to compute f prime of x. I'll just do this quickly. So derivative of the first, 3x squared. Second, bring down the 2, it's a 12x. And the 9x is just a plus 9. And minus 12 is, of course, 0. Uh, the derivative of minus 12 is 0. So how do we find the um, extrema of f of x from f prime of x? Well, we set f prime of x equal to 0 and find the x that uh, guarantee this. So 3x squared plus 12x plus 9 is equal to 0. And now we just employ the quadratic formula because this implies x is equal to plus or minus, uh, excuse me, uh, minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. 
happen to sub this in there directly, we get minus 12 plus or minus the square root of b squared is 144 minus 4 times 9 times 3. So that's uh, minus 72. Oh, no, excuse me. That's uh, minus 108. So that's uh, 4 times ac. So it's 4 times 3 times 9, which is 12 times 9. And then we divide all by 2a, which is 2 times 3. So it's 6. Okay. So computing this, we get minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 36 all over 6. And this is equal to minus 12 plus or minus 6 over 6. And it's pretty easy to see that this is minus 2 plus or minus 1. So the critical points are x is equal to minus 3 or x is equal to minus 1. Now, the question also asks us to classify them, so we actually need f double prime. So to get f double prime, we just differentiate f prime. So this is equal to 6x plus 12. So to solve this, we just need to evaluate um, our critical points. Let's call them x1 and 2. So f double prime of x is equal to 6x, uh, let me just clarify again, 6x plus 12. So f prime prime of minus 3 is equal to minus 18 plus 12, which is equal to minus 6, which is strictly negative. And remember, let's, well, let's go up and check our rule again. When our derivative is negative, it means we have a maxima. So that, for uh, this implies uh, minus 3 is a maxima. Um, while f prime prime of minus 1 is just equal to uh, minus 6 plus 12, which is equal to 6, which is positive. So this implies minus 1 is a minima, because whenever our derivative, our second derivative is positive, uh, excuse me, this should be minima. Whenever our second derivative is positive, that corresponds to a minimum point. Okay, so now we found all our critical points, and we found our maxima and minima. Okay, now the next example is going to be a little trickier but we should still be able to do it pretty easily. Um, so let's find all critical points of the function f of x is equal to x squared times e to the minus x, and classify them, okay? So the idea is the still the same. We're going to solve the equation f prime of x equals 0, but what's f prime of x? We have to work that out. So it, let's change this, uh, noting that, of course, this, we're going to switch notations to df dx because it's easier, I think, to do a lot of uh, derivative calculations with this. So if we want to work out df dx, uh, that's equal to, well, we have to use the product here, rule here, right? So it's the derivative of the first, so that's 2x times e to the minus x, plus the first times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of e to the minus x, dx, is, by the chain rule, just going to get us minus e to the minus x. So this will change this plus to a minus, and it gets e to the minus x here. And we can uh, simplify this a bit by factoring out an e to the minus x. And we get uh, 2x minus uh, x squared. And we can factor out another x here to get it's actually x e to the minus x times 2 minus x. Okay? Now, we need to think a little bit about how this is, when this is equal to zero. Because um, we're saying it's equal to zero, right? To solve for x's that are critical points. So one obvious one is x equals zero. And the other one is if x is equal to two, then this bracket will be zero, so the entire thing will be zero. e to the minus x uh, looks like the graph that looks like this. So it tends to zero, but never gets there. So this term is not equal to zero, so we can just divide across by it. So this is equivalent to saying x times 2 minus x is equal to 0. So x is equal to 0, or x is equal to 2. Those are our two critical points. Now to find f double prime of x, we need to do the same thing. It might get a little complicated. Um, so this is the notation for uh, the second derivative of f with respect to like this Leibniz notation, this fractional notation, as opposed to this kind of dash notation. Um, this is going to be equal to, well, it's going to be the two times the derivative of x e to the minus x dx, um, 
minus the derivative of x squared e to the minus x squared. What's nice, however, is that this uh, x squared e to the minus x squared is our original function, so we actually already know what the derivative of this is. So this is minus um, whatever we get here. So let's just bring this down, in fact, actually. I don't want that. So let's copy this down here. Because this is that we already worked this out, basically. And the derivative of this, we'll have to do the product rule again, so this might get a bit messy. Um, the derivative of the first is zero, is 1, so we get I'll just have e to the minus x, um, plus x times the derivative of the second one, so that'll actually be uh, minus x e to the minus x. Okay? So now let's just evaluate this at, so this is f double prime of x, remembering that this notation, these mean the same thing. So remember, we don't. Fortunately, we don't have to solve this equal to zero. Although it might be easy to nice to write it like this: two e to the minus x over uh, one minus x minus two x uh, plus x squared. I think that's what that comes out to be. Um, which is two e to the minus x times one minus three x plus x squared. So to work out the sign of this. And um, we just plug in x equals 0, so at x equals 0, this whole thing is equal to 2 times 1 minus 6 plus 4, which is um, equal to minus 2, which is less than 0, which implies x equals 0 is uh, minima. Oh, sorry, is uh, maxima, right? And at x equals, what's our other uh, root? It's x equals 2. So that would be give us 2e to the minus 2 times 1 minus 6. Oh, sorry, I made a mistake here. Um, this should be, of course, it's just 2 times 1. So this is actually equal to 2, because all these things disappear when x equals 2. I subbed in x equals 2 here by mistake. So this is actually, 2 is greater than 0, of course. So this implies this is a minima, in fact. Pardon me on that one. It is a minima. Um, so this is 1 minus 6 minus 4, so this will be our minus 2. It is equal to minus 2, which is less than 0. Implies x equals 2 is a maxima. So hopefully that made sense to people. We went through some examples there. Sorry about the mistake at the end, but hopefully it didn't confuse anything. Um, so this was how to find critical points. So hope that made sense to everyone, and I'll see you guys next time.